Hi guys, it's Ronnie and welcome back to my channel. If you read the title, you already know what this video is going to be. I'm going to be redoing my froggy headband tutorial. So I read you guys' comments on the other video that were like, this is unclear, I don't understand what's going on. And granted, like I did not expect that video to get a lot of views anyway, and so like I I guess I just didn't put like that much thought into how I was presenting it, so this time I'm going to try to be clearer with my directions, but they're going to say mostly the same, and yeah, just hopefully this video is a lot clearer, so let's get into it. I'm sure you're not here to hear me talk, so yeah. So this video is in collaboration with Duval. They are a skincare brand that makes like different tools and such to help with your skincare. I'm specifically talking about the Radiance Spin Care System. It comes with two facial brushes, one for exfoliating and one just for, you know, regular use. The other two are a body brush that's like significantly larger and the other one is a pumice stone. I really like both the cleansing brush and the body brush those are the ones i use the most obviously because i wash my face and the cleansing brush is great for that but i also love the body brush because it's a great way to just like get all of the dirt off my skin without like trying to scrub really hard so i love this brush because it doesn't move too fast it's not like super it's not spinning super fast but it's also not super slow it's just at a good pace and the brushes are fairly soft so you can get a good clean without like irritating your skin a lot. However, I will say this is not sponsored. This is just in collaboration with. However, I do have a coupon code for you guys. If you guys use RAUNI Ronnie at checkout for this system, you'll get 70% off of your purchase, which is an amazing deal. So y'all should go down to the description box. I will leave a link to it down below and hopefully you guys check it out if you're looking for a new a new item a new utensil to add to your skincare anyway let's get on with the video so for supplies you're gonna need your crochet hook which is a size i or 5.5 millimeters uh, for yarn you're just gonna need one skein of dollar tree yarn whatever color green whatever color you want it to be just that's gonna be the color of the base. You're also gonna need like a crochet needle, scissors, and black felt and black thread and needle if you decide to do the eyes as I did them in the previous video. This time around, I specifically chose Dollar Tree yarn because one, it's super easy to access, and two, they do have stats for it, which I'll show on the screen right now if you wanna pause it and look over for this, you'll also need to know what a slip knot and foundation chain is. You'll need to know what a chain one is and so on, like what that means. A slip stitch, a half double crochet, a double crochet, and a front and back post double crochet. Now in my last one and also in this one, I will leave in the description some different resources you can use if you're not really sure what some of these are because it can be confusing if you're jumping into a project but you're not sure what some of these are. So definitely check it out. To start off, we're going to do a slip knot and then to that we're going to add five chain stitches. This will be our foundation chain. Now that we have the foundation chain, we can start to do our first row of half double crochets. A half double crochet is achieved by yarning over, sticking your hook into this first stitch, then pulling up a loop, yarning over, and then pulling all the way through. To get three stitches on this first row, you're going to insert your hook, not in the first chain that you see there, but the second chain. This will ensure that you only have two more spaces left at the end, so that will thus create the three stitches that you need. At the end of that row, you're going to chain one and turn your work so you are starting on the second row. For the second row, you're going to do two half double crochets into the first stitch space.
Then in the second, you're going to do one half double crochet. And in the final one, you're going to do two half double crochets and then chain one and turn your work. By adding an extra half double crochet at the end of each row, or two for that stitch space, it will help to expand or make more of the V-shape that you want in trying to make your project wider. You may also notice that I am putting the row and stitch count in the top right corner in case you get lost or just need to see that number just to make sure that you're on the right track. For rows 5 through 7, you're going to continue that increase, and I'm just going to speed right through it because it's the same process as I've shown you in the first four rows. Once you've done rows 1 through 7, you'll start on row 8 through 28, which the stitch count will be 15, so you'll be living at the same the entire time, which means you'll be doing one stitch into each space. This will be done for rows 8 through 28. It can also help if you put a stitch marker in, which I do a little bit later here once I get past row 10. For rows 1 through 28, I decided to measure just how long it is, and before we begin decreasing, it is 14.5 inches. To begin decreasing on row 29, you're going to stick your hook into the first stitch space and bring up a loop. Then in the second space, you'll do the same, so you'll have three strands on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull all the way through. Then in the third stitch you're going to continue like you normally would and do a half double crochet. I think that this way of decreasing might be a little bit easier to understand if you're a beginner because then you get to stick your hook through each of the stitch spaces so it's not as confusing as just completely skipping over a space. And like at the beginning of the row, at the end of the row, you're going to do the same thing with the last two stitches. So in the second to last stitch, you're going to stick your hook through and bring up a loop. In the last stitch, you'll stick your hook through, bring up a loop, and have three strands on your hook, and then yarn over and pull all the way through. And you'll continue this pattern for rows 30 through 34, continuing to decrease at both ends of the rows until you come up with three stitches left. And I ended up on row 34 with three stitches.
At the end of row 34, you're going to chain one, and then you're going to want to turn slightly so that you're at the edge of the work. This is how we're going to do the outer edge. Uh, th so we won't be doing half double crochets anymore, we'll just be doing straight double crochets. And you'll want to do this into any of the spaces that you see uh, on the out outer edge because there's no defined stitch spaces. It's kind of hard to tell you where exactly to put your double crochets, but I'd recommend just taking it slow and if you see that there's a huge gap between some or some seem too close, then just unravel your work a little bit go back and stick your hook in a new in a new space. Now obviously when you get to the other end and there are defined stitch spaces, so those three that you had at the start and the three that you'll have at the end, obviously you can just go into those stitches and do a double crochet into the three of them. When you get back to the start of where you put in your double crochets, you're going to want to do a slip stitch and chain one so you can start a new row or round. For this new row, we're going to do something different. We're going to be doing double crochets into the front and the back posts of the previous round. So instead of yarning over and inserting your hook into the stitch space, you're going to go slightly below that to where there's kind of this, this post that's where your double crochet is from the previous round. This is really hard to describe. So for the first one, I'm doing a front post double crochet. This means I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to stick my hook behind the post. This means that the post will be on the upper Part, or it'll be covering part of my hook and that's when I will uh, yarn over essentially and pull up a loop so I have three loops on my hook and then continue with a double crochet like I normally would. Now the back is where it gets awkward and kind of weird but it's essentially the reverse of the front post. So you see your next post in your line of stitches and instead of having your hook go through the front of it so it's on top you'll go through the back and pull up a loop again I'll leave links and resources in case this is confusing to you or if it's just like I don't understand even from the video or me explaining I'm sure there are other people who can explain it a lot better and in a more sensical way so if you're getting stuck here I'd say pause the video go check out the links down below and come back uh, so you can finish your project more or less you'll continue this process all the way around until you've reached the beginning again and again you'll just slip stitch and chain one when you get to the end. To start the straps you're going to continue the next round with double crochets into the first five stitches that you see uh, that are sort of around the same area that you've done the first three stitches that started the whole project. At the end of that row, you're going to just chain two and turn your work. The straps are a continuation of the same process as before with front and back post double crochets. So into the second row, you're going to do the same process in alternating between front post and back post double crochets. And 
and for the next few rows you will continue to do the same thing in doing five double crochets across and then in the next row chaining two and then doing four or two front post and two back post double crochets. When you get your desired length, and I'll put up how many rows I decided to do personally, but you can do longer or shorter, again, depending on how much yarn you bought. If you bought two skeins, you can do quite long ones. If you only bought one skein, then I would, you know, say to stick to the pattern exactly. But at the end of your desired length, you're going to chain one, and then you can cut it off and tie it, secure it. And for the second strap, you're going to do the same process, except for to start off, you're going to tie your yarn or secure your yarn onto the other side, roughly where you started on the opposite side. So you can measure this by just folding it and seeing where you started, or you can just kind of guesstimate where you want it to be but more or less you're going to tie it into a stitch space and then start doing your double crochets. And by the end, you should have the same length as the other side, and you'll do the same. You'll just chain one and cut it off and secure it. So if you're going for the froggy headband look, you're going to continue using your green yarn, but I am using the footage from the first video because I think it's still relevant, especially if you don't know how to do a magic circle this is a great alternative if you only know how to do a slip knot and single crochets etc so that's exactly what you'll do you'll create a slip knot and then chain one and then you'll do a single crochet into the first loop the first space the first chain Then you'll put four more single crochets into the same space and it will create your first little round of five stitches total. At the end, you will do a slip stitch and then chain one, and then you'll begin your next round. To increase in the second round, you'll do two single crochets into each stitch, which will then create 10 stitches overall.
and of course at the end you'll do a slip stitch and then chain one and begin the third round and the third round will have one single crochet in the first stitch then two single crochets in the next stitch and so on and so forth so it'll be one stitch will have one the next one will have two the next one will have one and so goes the pattern At the end of the third round, you can actually just slip stitch, chain one, and then cut it off, and you would have a perfect little round, and you would create two of those for each eye. And of course, with the white, we're going to be doing the same process, except for instead of three rounds, we'll just be doing the first two. So once you have that done, you'll sew the white onto the green using a yarn needle and the yarn of your choice. I would assume it would be white, but you could also use green if you were worried about it coming through on the back. Afterwards, you'll want to create the pupils and this will be done or at least I did it with black felt You also have the option of using yarn if you like But I used black felt I just cut it out and then sewed it on with a regular needle and thread Once you have your eyes completely together, then you're going to use your yarn needle once again and you're going to sew the eyes onto the headband wherever you'd like, wherever you think they look nice. You could also use a pin if you wanted to to see where they might end up if you'd like to try it on before you finish sewing it on. But once you've done that, you have a finished broggy headband. So I hope you guys understood this video a little bit better. Let me know other things you want to see tutorials for in the future, or if you want other versions of this, then uh, I can just keep making the same video, but with different versions. But yeah, this is how the Dollar Tree yarn should turn out to look like using this specific pattern. And obviously you can add whatever you want to the outside of it. 
so yeah anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next one